Good morning to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. It is Monday, the 25th of July, 2022. And uh, good morning to you here from Phoenix, Arizona. That's where I am. Time for the hurricane outlook and discussion. I'll talk about why I am in Phoenix, what's going on with that. But yeah, we're going to get into things a little bit more in detail here. I've already done the What's Up segment. So let's look at things a little bit closer and kind of unpack what we're looking at over the next several days and why this quiet pattern that our headline graphic here, what's up with that? Why is it so quiet? Well, we'll get into that and more, including, like I said, what I'm doing out here in the Southwest. Hint, it is for the Southwest Monsoon, which has been pretty active here the last several days, and it looks to remain that way for the next few days to come. And I'll talk to you a little bit about why that is so important and so needed out here. All right? So let's first start with water temperatures, at least the anomalies, the departures from the long-term average, generally warmer than normal in the main development region with a cold area, colder than average to the north of there. Gulf of Mexico is still running above normal. The Northwest Atlantic, quite a bit warmer than it should be. We still got the La Nina going on out here, and we're going to see a pretty good uptick in colder anomalies starting to manifest themselves here in the Eastern Pacific because, let's get me back, we have had a pretty good burst, <clears throat> excuse me, of some strong trade winds coming through here in recent weeks, and that helps to foster this upwelling or an upwelling Kelvin wave, very fancy term for just upwelling, really, where colder water gets brought to the surface from way below, and that will start to show up in these anomaly maps here as we get into August, and that's really going to help to kickstart the Atlantic hurricane season, I do believe, into much higher gear than where we are. You can't really get much lower gear. I mean, it's been really, really quiet, but it's not the sea surface temperatures. That's the one thing that is definitely uh, the one puzzle piece that is in place. In fact, if we look from anomalies to actual sea surface temperatures, all of this area of the Gulf of Mexico is now 30 Celsius or warmer. Up here, we've got a pretty large area, once again, of 31 Celsius. That also extends off the west coast of Florida and south of Cuba here. So upper ocean heat content and surface warmth that's not the issue. There's plenty of warm water and fuel. It's just that the atmosphere isn't cooperating, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in just a moment. Off of the East Coast and Mid-Atlantic, generally warm water temperatures abound. There's the 26 degrees Celsius line, or just shy of 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's starting to advance a little bit more to the north, and uh, maybe, just maybe, it'll reach up here to the shores of Long Island before all is said and done, so you guys can jump in the water down there off of Freeport or East Rockaway or out in the Hamptons or Fire Island and enjoy some not so chilly water temperatures. Uh, down south though, no worries, definitely warm enough for tropical activity and warm enough to enjoy some time in the water without getting too chilly. I like the water generally warm, not too warm, you don't want to get into the bath from steamy temperatures outside, but I don't like it 65 degrees either. All right, enough about me. Let's look at the vorticity signature. And there's, you know, not much happening. You're looking for these little blobs out here like that and that. And they're just not doing much. There's not a lot of energy out there right now. And it's just a generally quiet pattern. And let me just say this, too. I've seen a lot of people talking on Twitter and on especially Storm 2K, my favorite of the message boards, uh, you know, just how quiet it's been and a lot of people kind of comparing this to 2013 when that was forecast to be a very busy season and it was a gigantic, epic bust for the forecast uh, community. And, you know, people are thinking maybe that will happen again this year. Well, I keep reminding you, and even myself sometimes, my colleagues too, that look, it's only late July. Typically, even in a very busy season, it is quiet in late July. Deep Saharan air abounds. That is uh, very typical, very common to see. That is not unusual. The stability of the Atlantic being where it is, it's very stable out there. That's normal. That is normally what we see even in a projected hyperactive season. And again, I can remind you, we think back to even years, and I know that the setup is not the same, but even years like 2005, 1995, 1999, 2017, 
things took off later. 2004, we didn't even have Alex until the very end of July into August, and we went on through the end of September where we kept having the major landfalls, ending there with Gene the last few days of September in 2004. The season went on to persist through December, as you might recall, right? And we still had an ace that year, an ace score of over 220 points, if memory serves. And we had the destructive Ivan included in that. We had Charlie and others, of course. Certainly Francis was in there. And that season didn't get started, really. The first name storm, not until Alex there at the very end of July into August. So you can squeeze a lot in a 60-day time frame, all of August, all of September. And then you have October. And need, need I remind you, we had Michael, October 10th. 2018, not a particularly busy season, not a very favorable season overall for sea surface temperatures and that kind of thing, but we had a Cat 5 hurricane that year, for goodness sakes, plus Florence, North Carolina's most destructive hurricane ever, mainly because of the flooding. So you look out, you see this uh, out in the Atlantic, there's not much happening. That's going to change, and it is only late July. Just got to look at the calendar sometimes, but... It is interesting because things are generally uh, very stable out here. And you can see this air mass, if I can draw on it, <laughs> right here. Just looking at the cloud deck, that is a very stable air mass. When you see those types of clouds, you can just look and go, yep, nothing, no deep convection from that. In fact, the intertropical convergence zone is all but non-existent down here south of 10 degrees of latitude. Very dry air getting ejected out of northwest Africa here. Strong tropical waves, those are there, these African easterly waves that get embedded within the trade winds, uh, pockets of energy, sometimes moisture, vorticity, there's spin there. The energy is there, it is a seedling, but the moisture overall throughout the column of the atmosphere is lacking because of this literal blanket of Saharan air that has come off Africa and has spread all throughout the deep tropics here Keeping, it, keeping things very, very quiet. This will eventually let up. The high pressure over the Atlantic will lift more to the north, and the Saharan air layer will also lift more to the north, and these tropical waves will have a chance to develop. Remember, usually it's not until about August 15th or August 20th that we start to really look into the deep tropics for development, and things can change even within just a few days' time once we get into August, especially the latter third. And I know we watch this so closely that it seems like it takes a long time for things to get going. And people are watching. They're anticipating, not with a positive sense necessarily, but you anticipate the hurricane season ramping up because we were told that it was going to be very busy. And I think that we can watch this every five minutes on some satellite products, every hour, people posting stuff, Twitter, social media as a whole, it just makes it seem like it takes a lot longer than I think we are used to uh, even 10 years ago. All right, all right, they're coming. The hurricanes will be here. We better darn be ready. This is just another way to look at it. This is the GFS 6Z, uh, a lot of dry air. That's what all this brown is through here. And then you do have these pockets of moisture that try to come along. They are there. There's one right here. You track it across there. Let's use yellow. Let's wait for this to recycle. And we can watch this tropical wave, a little bit of a low pressure area with it, but it's enveloped in all that dry air. But then look at the end of that period, this is five days out. It ends in the vicinity of Hispaniola, that energy is there. What happens after that? It could have a path towards the Gulf where sometimes the GFS lately has been indicating that it tries to blossom. So this is not always a good thing. When these tropical waves are very anemic coming across, those are pieces of energy that then end up in the western basin and they can come to life later. Think about Harvey. Harvey tried to develop in August uh, across the eastern Caribbean where it's generally hostile. It died away. We thought, Psh, that's it. But then it came back to life, if you will, in the vicinity of the Yucatan. And we all remember what happened in just two short days. That was the hurricane part, as it made landfall there in Texas, um, near Port Aransas and vicinity as a Cat 4. And then, of course, it went on to become 
more than a $100 billion disaster for southeast Texas from the flood event. All of that lasting as it and, and happening uh, as it went from the Yucatan into Texas with a very short period of opportunity to develop. So it's a it's a dry, calm pattern. You darn well, like I said, better enjoy it because it is going to change. I assure you, it is coming. All right, what else is coming? Well, uh, monsoon moisture. This is very important. Let me just talk a little bit about uh, the Southwest as a whole, why I'm out here, and so forth and so on. And again, that's the good thing about the hurricane outlook and discussion. If you like to watch these longer videos, this is what I do. Um, a, the Southwest Monsoon, also called the North American Monsoon, a real monsoon pattern. It has been studied and it is officially a thing that the change of wind direction, basically there's a big high, uh, let's use the color blue, there's a big high that sits out here and sometimes it can be right over Arizona and that big old high will squash convection. It sits right over the region and that's it. The air is uh, compressed, you get the Heating in the deserts, Phoenix will be 110, Tucson, close to that. The Southeast California deserts, Nevada, Southwest Utah, you name it. And that prevents moisture from coming in from the Gulf, coming out of the Pacific, or even across some of the forested areas of Mexico, where evapotranspiration adds a lot of moisture to the atmosphere. If that's squashed and not able to be advected or moved laterally or horizontally, into the southwest, you cut off your moisture source. But when that high pressure area shifts some, maybe it sits farther to the east a little bit, uh, like this, then the clockwise flow around it scoops up that moisture that comes out of the Gulf, across the mountains down, down here, even the Pacific, and you bring that into the southwest and magic happens. It is amazing. We get greenage, and I don't mean the greenage from Twister, and if you know the movie, which most of you do, you know what I'm talking about. This is green as in foliage. The green comes out. Um, reservoirs get more water. The fire danger gets lessened. It is a really, really positive thing, and we need more of it. We need the most monsoon moisture that we can possibly get out here. And right now, it's favorable, but you do have some consequences with it. And I'll even encircle over into New Mexico. These are flash flood watches. Too much of a good thing. People live out here, of course. It's a beautiful area. A lot of retirees. It's just nice. There's vacationers, the parks, Grand Canyon, Zion, you name it. People are enjoying it. But with that comes problems. The flooding uh, and just the overall moisture. Yes, you can have a flood threat. And I'm focusing here on Utah because that's where I'm headed today. Um, it, you know, The flash flooding is an issue and it's in the moderate category today. Uh, for the risk. They've outlined that out of Salt Lake City. And speaking of Salt Lake City, I heard an interesting uh, podcast on the Daily from the New York Times about the Great Salt Lake and how it is drying up gradually due to the, the diversion of water that feeds into it. You have Lakes Mead and Powell that are also dropping, part of the overall longer-term drought that's happening out here. It is a very big problem. The area is growing substantially. Phoenix, where I am, population boom. Uh, Clark County, Nevada, where Las Vegas is. Southwest Utah, Washington County, that's St. George, and on up into Salt Lake City itself. Major population expansions out here drawing on those water resources. So I'm telling you, you get the monsoon to be active. You need everything you can get because it is definitely man versus nature. And that clock is trying to run out using more water than seems to be getting input into the system. So I get excited about it because I think it's a good thing when we can get this rainfall, but you do have the potential for some issues here with flash flooding. So there's the watch, the potential here, all these different parks. The Weather Service does a really good job of explaining uh, how this unfolds with these nice infographics. And I invite you, if you are in the area, you know people in the area, please point them either to this video or the weather.gov site and point them to Southwest Utah. So probable, okay, you know, that's getting on up there. Um, you know, there's three stages, probable, possible, probable, and expected. So we're right in the middle there, all these different parks and gulches, et cetera, 
And so there you go. So that's where I'm going to be is uh, Southwest Utah today, um, specifically the St. George area. Let me click in here and show you the forecast for that area. St. George, Utah, way down here in Southwest Utah. Been there several times, even for a dying hurricane back in 2014. That was Norbert, and I caught some flash flooding over in the uh, Snow Canyon area. So this is where I'm gonna be, right here in the St. George area. Pretty big and growing town, city. A lot of people come through there on I-15. Maybe they stay there to go to Zion. Um, it's, it's problematic, and I even read in the forecast discussion that there is a chance for a significant urban flood event in the St. George area today. So I'm gonna leave Phoenix after I'm done cutting this video, and we're gonna head up my colleague Matt and I to Southwest Utah, so stay tuned. We shall see what we shall see. But first, let me show you what we got since we've been out here real quick, and then I'll wrap things up. This was on, um, I think, Saturday or Friday or something like that. I've been out here for a while. Um, that's not a tornado or anything like that. That's the heavy rain shaft. And oh, there's a little lightning bolt there. And it doesn't look dramatic. You know, it's not your sweeping, big vortex tornado type deal out in the plains. But this is a big deal out here. It really is. The heavy rain, it can create flash flooding. There are other negatives, but the positives are so vastly important. It dry, it, it makes a dry fuel source. You remember that movie, Only the Brave, with Josh Brolin, the terrible tragedy up at the Granite Mountain area with the hot shots? The fuel, you look out there, Brolin says, what do you, what do you see out there? I see fuel. This is wetting that fuel down and keeping the fire danger at bay a little bit. Very important to the local ecosystem, everything about it. That's what it looks like. That's your monsoon rain. Uh, that's one example. This was yesterday. I do remember that. Um, and this is South Maricopa County. Another big thunderstorm was coming in. There was a big old area of dust that swept into, this is a nice long video, and you can see the dust as I pan over here in just a moment. Uh, the dust made its way into Phoenix Metro, Chandler, and Scottsdale. It looked like Mars out there for a little bit. Kind of reminded me of the movie Dune. Um, it's just a different landscape, and when it comes to life with deep moisture, and this is pretty good tropical moisture coming in. The dew points go up into the 60s and 70s. By the way, that's Interstate 8 right there. Um, it's just amazing. So I'm very fascinated with it. It's part of my overall uh, just interest in weather. I'm a weather geek at heart, so here I am. I will post what I can. I've been doing so on Twitter and on our Discord, which is connected with our Patreon. So our supporters who make this possible through funding and equipment, uh, they get to see a lot of this in real time over on Discord, we chat with each other. So if you're interested, join up on Patreon and you can uh, see that as it happens. All right, all right, so I will be up in the Southwest Utah area, I don't know, six hours from now, something like that, and we'll see what happens. Hopefully for the sake of the folks up there, they get the rain, but not too much of it. And it, it actually might even move down that cluster towards Vegas. So we might end up in Las Vegas later today. Who knows? We shall see. Um, and not for fun and games, but for the weather. I promise. People that know me, they know. I'm all business once we're out here doing the work. Vacation time, that's different. All right. All right. That's it for me here out in the southwest United States. As always, I appreciate you tuning in. We'll enjoy the quiet pattern because in a month, uh-uh, we're not going to be talking about quiet, that is for sure, or at least as for sure as I can be. You know, I, I think it's going to change, and why shouldn't it? It's hurricane season, and we're heading into August. You guys have a great rest of your week. I'll still do the morning updates, and then uh, I fly back finally uh, this coming Thursday. So we have a few more days out here. All right, that's it. I am Mark Sutter. Thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you again tomorrow morning with the What's Up on the Tropics segment.